and welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of The Shot. Here, I have a very special guest with me today, three-time NBA All-Star, and I have him with three finals appearances, all of them ending in championships, and one finals MVP, Mr. Lee. How you doing today, What's sir? What's up, man? How you doing? So, first things first, let's go back down to the background. This guy played for the Washington Wizards, was balling all out, had a brilliant 10-year career, and still managed a way to come away with, with three finals. Three finals, man. Tell me tell me the process that it takes, because we all play all basketball yeah. right now. Tell me the process that it takes just yeah. to get there. It, it takes a lot. Um, you know, most people think when, when they see out there, they see a glitz and glam, they say, oh, crossover, dunk, oop, all that stuff. Behind the scenes, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, all that stuff is true. All that stuff you see in the commercials, the grind is real. Um, basically, during um, practice and training camps and all that, like basketball for me is year round and those who take it seriously with their craft were always working with the greats. Um, I was out working with um, Kobe Bryant because um, he retired. I was working with Michael Jordan. Um, you know, I'm just, because I'm a shooting guard, so I was just perfecting my craft. And um, basically it, it takes a lot out of you, and um, but it's all worth it in the end. All right, all right. Now you talked about working out with some of the greats. Uh, as a rookie on your rookie year, who is some of the guys that you worked with and that mentored you on your team, not on your team, but helped you throughout your career? Yeah, uh, Gilbert Arenas, he was definitely one of them because um, he, uh, that year I was a rookie, that was the same year, um, 06, 05, 06 season. Everybody was scoring crazy numbers. Gilbert averaged like 29 points, uh, oh, possibly his best season, yeah. So, um, like, he was just one of the guys. Him, Karan Butler was another one on that team. Um, they were just there for me whenever I needed, uh, you know, I asked for questions or anything like that. They was there. They was, they was great guys. Antoine Damison, another one. So, shout out to y'all. So, how did they affect you when it came for it was you and Bradley Bill and Wall and it was you guys' time in the limelight for playoffs? What did, what did they tell you that got you ready for those moments? Yeah, I mean, they they really got me ready. They just told me, you know, just stay focused. Um, just consistency is key is really what they told me because in a seven-game series, you know, you can play a team anywhere from four to seven games, and that's, like, a long time within the span of two weeks. You're just playing the same exact team over and over again. Like, and um, we got a chance to play against the greats in the playoffs too. Um, LeBron, he kind of uh, torched us that one year, 07, in the playoffs. Uh, yeah. Yeah, blocked my shot, sent that to the fifth row. Uh, it was kind of crazy. But, uh, yeah, they just told me consistency is key. And when I got out there with Wall and Bill, we was like, all right, we're going to do this. Like, it's, it's our time. All right, speaking of LeBron, you you guys had a chance to play the Miami Heat that year. It was 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, it was game seven on the road in Miami. Tell me what was going through your head. It was five seconds left, and you hit that game winner that moved you guys to the finals. Yeah. What was going through your head at that time? Oh, man, it was just, I was like, I'm, I'm ready. Just give me the ball, get out the way, basically, is, is what, what my mentality was. Because, like, I've been in the NBA at that point, or I believe five years or something like that, I lost track. Uh, and I was like, yeah, um, I'm the, the team captain, basically, and this is our time. Uh, you know, I, don't, I respect the Wayne Wade, LeBron, Bosch, and all them great. Shout out to y'all. But, um, like, when it was time to take the game-winning shot, I was like, yeah, come on, bring it on. Because the finals is next. It's like win or lose. We was down one. If I miss, we go home again. And if I make it, we go to the finals, which y'all know how that turned out. Went to the finals and won. So, so with all that going on, and this, this is going to lead us into our next thing, who was your rivalry throughout your career? Mm, that's a... Mm, that's a that's a tough one. I'd probably have to say Wade and LeBron, like on kind of a, a kind of the same balance, because um, we'd always see them in the playoffs. You know, um, we ran into them when LeBron was in Cleveland, lost to them that year, 07. We lost to um, Wade that year. We was uh, my rookie season um, in 06. We lost to them. We lost to LeBron the next year. Uh, got revenge in 2011. Uh, they got us back in 2012, um, so it's been like it's been a respect thing, but it's very heavily competition based. So, much in that 
What I'm hearing is you thrive off competition. I love it. I love it. So we're going right into it with this one. Playoff basketball. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the series are heating up right now. Oklahoma City just lost last night. They're down 3-1. First things first, let's go on a rivalry between Damian Lillard, Russell Westbrook, guys who are friends, all-stars. They they like each other, but, man, do they hate each other on the court. I love it. I absolutely love it. If there's a word stronger than the word love, then, then I would use that word for what I think about this rivalry. This is brilliant for the game of basketball. It's bringing back that old feeling of, like, the the um, 2000 era, the 90s era, 80s, all the way in the back. Um, it's amazing because you have two guys, like you said, who are friends off the court or whatever. There's so many different players. Like right now, we're, we're just talking as friends, right? We get on that court. I'm not going to be friends with you. You're not going to be friends with me. We're out to get each other, right? And that's what Damian Lillard and uh, Russell Westbrook are doing. And they're just going at each other. It's just pure competition based. Because uh, basketball, like I say, it's about competition, trash talk, and aggression. That, that's the game of basketball, with the way I see it. And it, it's like good, healthy trash talk. Like, it just comes a part of the game. And the reason why I love it is because they're backing it up with their trash talk. Damian Lillard and Russell Westbrook are two of the best players on their own teams and two of the best players in the league. Um, when they get on the court and play against each other, they're dropping 20, 30 points a game on each other. And it's amazing to see that. Okay, so sticking with this, how do you think this rivalry pans out between these two teams, given that Portland's up 3-1, Thunder is down in the series, they lost last night, but they're not the best three-point shooting team, but they're also a team with guys who are hurt, such as Paul George, who at the time before the series start, didn't shoot the ball in, in after that Houston game. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's tough when you're OKC because um, basically – Throughout the season, it was that team who could be up there with the Houston Rockets and the Golden State Warriors as a team that's like, oh, yeah, we can make a threat in the finals. And then after that All-Star break, they kind of dropped off, and they, they were at one point at the eighth seed. Um, so you just got to take it game by game in this situation, down 3-1. We've seen 3-1 comebacks before, um, a couple of them happening before the finals. Um, for example, the Phoenix Suns that year when Kobe played with pretty much nobody. Uh, Phoenix, yeah. they took it game by game. Uh, Amari Stoudemire, Steve Nash, all those guys took game by game, came back and won. Uh, you saw it with LeBron and Kyrie and the, um, the Cavs come back. So at this point, all you got to do, like I said, game by game. And if you look ahead to say, okay, we got to get to game seven, that's not going to work. Because right now they're in game five, which will be whenever, tomorrow or the next day. Uh, and so just focus on possession by possession. Just take it, take it slowly. All right. So who do you think comes out of that series? I I think Damian Lillard and, and CJ McCollum. You think they Trail end Blazers. it? I think, let's see, is game five, that's in Portland? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think they'll end it there because they have a lot of momentum. Damian Lillard, the past few games, uh, even though they lost that last game where he dropped, like 20 something in the third quarter they lost that game but this past game where they won he was showing that strong will a passion to win the game coming out of halftime so i see them carrying on this momentum from the win at okc into um to portland but i would love to see this game the series go seven you would love to see it go seven i would love to see it. it's it's interesting and you said three one and the first thing you you also brought up was the warriors Warriors this year uh, was a team that seems unstoppable, but yeah. looks quite stoppable. When you notice they blew another 3-1 lead, yeah. 31, 31 points to the Clippers. Yeah. They're up 3-1 to one in the series. It's a little deja vu. How do you think that impacts them as a team moving forward and how they can move? Well, I think when you look at them, they definitely want to win this game because uh, you see, uh, I'm going to bring up Houston. They're up 3-0, and they win. They'll They'll play the Warriors because they'll, they'll match up in the conference semis. But Houston is possibly going to win and sweep them. So the Warriors' mindset is like finishing it off here. Like we, most of us know that the Clippers are probably not going to win the, the series, come back and win the series. They might sneak in a game. Maybe there's a possibility, but I highly doubt it. Um, I see the Warriors uh, coming together when they need.
need to at the right time to finish this off. All right. There's a guy who's not in the playoffs this year who we're accustomed to seeing. You've seen him a couple times. Yeah. How does it feel not seeing LeBron in the playoffs this year? You know, it, it's crazy. It's crazy because um, he's been in the playoffs since I came in the league in 06. And I played him numerous times in the playoffs, I think three or four times. Um, and we've had great battles in the playoffs, but it's just different not seeing him in. But it's also good to see, like, the new up-and-coming stars of the next five, ten years in the playoffs doing their thing. Like, you got Giannis, uh, the Greek freak, in Milwaukee. He's doing his thing. Uh, Kawhi's still young in uh, Toronto. He's like a, what is he, like 26, 27, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Young cat. Young, yep. Um, you still got, uh, gosh, I'm losing it. <laughs> Philly. Philly's oh, a good yeah. team. Joel. Uh, Joel and B. Ben. ben Simmons, young players. Uh, it's just great to see all these guys, you know, trying to prove themselves uh, in the playoffs. And um, I would have loved to see LeBron in, but I mean, the playoffs to me is still exciting no matter who's in it because it's the NBA playoffs. So. Okay. Yeah. So you hinted to Giannis. Yep. I'm going to ask you this. Who would you rather have right now? Oh, I know it's coming. Giannis or Kevin? <laughs> Both two guys will mm -hmm. most likely be carrying the torch when LeBron retires, mm -hmm. and they'll be battling out for who's the best player in the NBA. Who would you rather have? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That's a tough one. Uh, if we're going right now, at their ages right now, I go with Giannis. Giannis. I go with Giannis wow. because I know it's a shock, but even though, you know, KD, he's got the uh, – He's got the all-around game where he can shoot the three. He can, uh, he's, that's the one thing he has basically over Giannis. Uh, Giannis is just so, like, on the physical side of it, I would take Giannis. Especially. He's a little more physical he's than Kevin. He's a little more physical than Kevin Durant. Uh, his ability to just maneuver through traffic, like, literally, you can stand um, three guys. You can put him in a 2-3 zone, and he would split that 1-2, slam dunk, like, it's crazy what they call him a Greek freak for a reason, but it's crazy. And and the thing is, he's only getting better. Like, yeah, it, this is not his ceiling, not even close. Like, but if this was his ceiling, then sky is the limit beyond the sky is the limit for Giannis, basically. That's what I'm trying to say, because he still hasn't his three point shot is getting better. OK, but once once that he has a consistent, consistent three point shot, man, <laughs> NBA better look out. But like at the moment right now, I would take Giannis. Another one. And this goes to the, another rivalry. Mm -hmm. D'Angelo Russell, Ben Simmons. They were teammates in high school. Mm -hmm. Now they're battling out right now. Mm -hmm. Who are you taking? I'm taking Ben. I'm taking Ben Simmons. Um, although, like I said, I, I, I guess I'm not taking guys who, who are not really accustomed to shooting the, the mid-range or three, kind of like, because if I'm, I'm looking at it as a perspective if who would I want on my team, right? So, because um, I'm a shooting guard, I shoot the ball. Um, I would want somebody like Ben Simmons who can run the point. I mean, you've so seen you it. you want the ball. In the That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Some things never change, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I know, I know. Some I know. things never change. Well, I average five assists per game, like Kobe. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 my career. But uh, anyway, back on track. Uh, Ben Simmons, you see what he can do even without needing to take a uh, 18 for jumper, which is for you all who don't know, it's not even a three pointer. He takes the shots like 10 feet and in, basically. All the shots he's taken. Um, when you see him able to pass the ball, able to rebound, and at his young age, he's what, 24? I think yeah. 23, something like that. And like I said, he's going to get better too. Like I said with Giannis, he's only going to get better. Eventually, He's going to shoot the three. He's going to start shooting the three because you're not going to be able to go throughout your whole career because let's say, God forbid, injury, uh, if he plays till he's about 36 or whatever, he's not going to go 12 more years without shooting a three in a game or without making a three. He'll shoot some, but even at that right now, he can still play the game to a high level, not as the highest where I would want it to be, but he scored 31 the other day without taking a three. So it was quite to see. But D. Ross, I'm not taking anything from him because he's a great player too. D'Angelo, I got your back. You on my team. <laughs> I would I'd rather have a shooter. I don't care. You're on my team, D Love. Uh 
the Warriors, do they – you've played, faced a lot of great teams like the Lakers. you faced a lot of strong and powerful teams over the years. Uh, with the Warriors, do you think they can still make the finals this year? They lose Boogie, who was the anchor and the guy who they waited for such a long time for him to come. Yeah. Just only play, what, a playoff game and a half? Yeah. And he falls down. Yeah, that, that. Are they still the team to beat going to that finals, knowing I'm, the way that Houston – is about to sweep Utah. I think they are. I think they are. Um, when you look at it, I always say this. The team who wins the finals the previous year, unless they, like, totally break apart, um, I think they're always the favorite to win the, the finals. Even, I was saying this, even with the Cavs, when they won in 2016, they hadn't broke off yet. Everybody was still together. I said they're still the favorites, um, even though, because Kevin Durant has to prove had to approve to beat the Warriors, which they, of course, they did, and that was silly by me, expecting the Cavs to win it. But in most years, the, the team who wins the finals before the current season is usually the favorite. So I still think the Warriors are. I believe the Rockets should have won last year. I mean, because Chris Paul got injured in Game Six, and I hate seeing that. Um, but the Rockets are another team. They're basically the only team that could stop the Warriors. But as of now, to go back to your question, they are the favorites. So you're still looking at them as the favorites, which is not a shock. It's common. But I'm going to throw a monkey in your wrench. OKC can get it done if they, if healthy and everyone is shooting. As you can see, they're not the best three-point shooting team. Houston, of course, can definitely get it done. Mm-hmm. I think those two teams are by far the best, and I think the the only way we'll know is when we see Houston go at it with Golden State. Yeah. Now with that team, they're going to separate within the next year. Yeah. At yeah. least three of those guys are going to be gone. Yeah. This is the uh, this is the old uh, I call it the, the Bulls effect. Uh, back in um, back in '98 when the Bulls won their last championship and the Bulls management horrible. That was just stupid how they broke apart. Uh, Michael Jordan. Retired, Scottie Pippen ended up leaving, Dennis Rodman, they all went to separate ways. This is kind of like the Warriors. This is kind of their last go around. And that's another reason why I think they're pushing all that aside right now to focus on another championship win like the Bulls did in 98 and complete this dynasty. Well, it'll be what, four? Four championships in five years, I believe? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Um, nearly as impressive as the Bulls six and eight years. So. Um, I think that they can, they can pull it together, and um, but I would definitely love to see the Rockets. Okay. Um, match up. In the East, we talk about we haven't talked about this one team in Boston. Yeah. Where do you see them fitting in? You've seen they just clean house and sweep the Pacers. Mm-hmm. This is a team that was struggling the entire regular season. Do you think they finally got it together? Uh, we'll see. Um, the, the the real test is when they play the Bucks the next round. Once uh the Bucks win tonight, the they'll sweep them. And they match up against Giannis because the um, when you look at the Celtics, they beat the Pacers without my boy Victor Oladipo. We went to the same school, by the way, St. Jerome's, great school. Uh, but I don't think that they have at the moment like the like there. There's a great chance that they could get past Giannis in the Bucks. But mm-hmm. I think this year it's it's the Bucks trying to get some revenge from last year because. When you look at those games, the Pacers was in it the whole way through. And if Victor Oladipo was there, which is their main closer, I think the series right now it would probably be still tied at two. So they just got lucky with that playing. All right. As we come to the end, real quick, who's in your finals? Bucks Warriors. But I want the Rockets to win. I'm predicting the Warriors, though. Okay. So this has been a great another edition of the episode of the shot tune in next week where we have another special guest with us my former manager candace leach she'll be in business and she'll give you the tips on how to handle your money wisely tune in again next time on the shot lee will you do the honors i got you Uh, jab step cross cross dribble pull up game game seven number five we'll see you next week